Mm, mm, mm. So good. Hey, YouTubers and RV fans, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about being in a digital nomad. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, my office setup when I'm on the road. And we're going to talk about how I determine Wi-Fi coverage, cellular coverage when I go for a specific location. So the first thing I want to talk about is the overall setup of the um, office here in the RV when I do get on the road. Okay, so I do use the dinette uh, to set up my office. And as you can see, the setup is pretty minimal. You've got the computer. Um, you know, I have a headset for my Teams meetings or my WebEx meetings. And sometimes I have a portable mouse, which makes it a little bit easier to navigate. And there are times if I'm going to be on the road for a really long time where I'll actually have a monitor that's bigger. Um, that helps, you know, at my age with my eyesight. <laughs> So, but really it's it's a fairly simple setup. Now you'll see some on uh, digital nomads who actually have a much more extensive setup, but I find this to be really easy. It's portable and it's easy to set up and take down, especially when I'm getting ready to travel. All right, so as most of you know, I work remotely. As a digital nomad, it affords me the opportunity working remotely to travel the country. And I did that successfully for the five years I was on the road. When COVID hit, um, a lot of organizations were pivoting to remote work uh, because obviously there was no way to go into work without fear of, you know, having, being impacted by the pandemic. So a lot of organizations pivoted to, to uh, remote work, which fortunately for me, I was already doing it. So there was really no pivot and I really didn't realize any change. The big change for me was when I decided to purchase a home base. And um, I really knew that I wanted to spend time in a, a rural portion of the country, but my biggest fear was whether or not I was gonna be able to have um, sufficient internet. Um, I knew that my um, cellular devices, I have Verizon and I also have T-Mobile. And I was concerned that those services were not going to um, have adequate strength or signal in a remote area. When I made the decision to purchase the house in rural Tennessee, um, one of the deciding factors was the fact that as rural as the house was, they had fiber optic internet, which was pretty crazy, but it was actually very nice for me. So getting back on the road and considering what my um, uh, internet connection types are gonna be is really a big consideration for me. Now we've talked about the office and setting up the office and all that, but you really need to make sure when you're traveling that you have decent cellular coverage in order to make sure that you can work. Now, I don't know about you, but it's worth the expense um, because it is a part of you know your income. So most digital nomads do not, do not really spare expense when it comes to their cellular network. Um, you know, I know some that have um, multiple um, home uh, Wi-Fi systems, I have others that use Starlink, um, and of course, the what is it, the Mobile Internet Resource Center uh, is a wonderful um, uh, YouTube channel for people to go to in order to decide what type of cellular service that they may need, especially if they're digital nomad and getting on the road for the first time. So I'll go ahead and, and put a link to that um, uh, channel here in the description. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to them. They're a great resource. Uh, the Mobile Resource Center also puts out an app for iPhone and for Android that's a coverage map. And what it does is it provides you with, you know, a fairly decent um, uh, depiction of what coverage is available you know, to the locations that you may be traveling. I'm going to show you a little video here. And in the video, you'll see that um, what I'm doing is I'm looking at coverage for my trip to Asheville when I was in Asheville for two weeks. And so really what was important to me was that my um, T-Mobile, which is really my reliable source, truthfully, and my Verizon were going to have sufficient coverage. Now, remember, Asheville is kind of mountainous. So you don't often have a lot of really good signal in the mountains. And as you can see from this video, that um, the coverage map provided a real good indication of what AT&T was doing, what Verizon was doing, what um, T-Mobile was doing, and what US Cellular was doing. In addition to that, it also gives you the opportunity to do speed tests. And uh, I am giving you an example of a speed test that I did here at home um, before I went out on the road. So you can see the type of speed uh, test results that I'm getting from fiber optics, which is pretty amazing. Um, I didn't do a comparison from fiber optics to cellular because quite frankly, there really isn't a comparison. Uh, 
Anyway, this um, app is really helpful and I use this every time I travel and I pin locations so that I can actually know what I can pretty much expect. Now, you can also expect that your campground uh, or RV park uh, internet connection and Wi-Fi is probably gonna be pretty poor. Now, I gotta tell you, when I was staying at the Asheville KOA, um, they had the best internet ever. And I don't know why, but they just did. And so for me, that internet was really, really great. In fact, I didn't use a cellular, my cellular service at all. I didn't use Verizon. I didn't use um, my T-Mobile. I strictly used the uh, internet from the campsite. Now, once you've established your um, internet connection so that you know you can work, then you're pretty much in good shape. And setting up your office environment is really something I think that's really personal. You know, you're spending a lot of time at that place in, in the RV. And you want to make sure you have a spot that's pretty much out of the traffic area if you can, especially if you're traveling with somebody. Uh, a space that provides you with a little bit of quiet, non-distractable areas to work. And uh, you also want to have comfort to some extent. I mean, you know, you don't want to be sitting in a hard dinette seat where there's no comfort. So in some cases, you may need to look at how you can uh, maybe put some additional cushion uh, on the uh, on the seats or you may want to shift the table around a little bit so that you have, you know, a little bit more room to work. A lot of this is very personal. For me, if I'm going to be on the road for an extended period of time, I'm going to have a more extensive setup. I'm going to have a, a big monitor. Uh, I'm going to have my keyboard and my mouse. But if I'm traveling for just a couple days or a couple weeks, then probably what I'm going to do is have that simple setup that I showed you in the beginning. And that's going to be just basically my laptop, my headset, and, uh, you know, typically a mouse. Uh, and that's going to really be it. Now, sometimes you can have wrist supports and, and different types of equipment, and that's great. But the one thing you want to make sure is that everything you do set up for your mobile office can be easily stored in preparation for travel. Now, for me, um, when I'm working during the day, um, I spend a lot of time on Teams. So I, between Teams and um, team messaging, team videos, and uh, that can really be a big data draw. So be mindful of how much data you're using. If you're strictly working off of a um, email, an email exchange, or maybe a chat bot or something, then your um, typical data usage will probably not really be that high. Now for me, I use about 15 to 20 gigs a month uh, of data for my mobile office. Now, to some extent, that's very little. Um, you know, and that's easily attainable. Now, there's some organizations where you may have a lot more time um, with your data, using data. A good example of that is if you spend, you know, an eight-hour day uh, on Teams or on WebEx or on Zoom or some other platform where the data is really being used. And that's especially true if you're on video. Now, when I'm on Teams, I'm often on video uh, and I'm often sharing my screen because I have to, you know, share my screen with my students. So, um, you have to be very mindful of that when you're actually looking at your cellular plan, when you're actually looking at your data connections, and um, just to make sure that you have sufficient data to support the activities that you know you do for your work each day. The one last thing too, before I close out the video is, you know, I uh, have a number of friends who are RVers who are digital nomads. Uh, they work remotely from the road and their office setup uh, has inspired me uh, in many ways, and hopefully my office setup has inspired them. Now, obviously, the minimalistic office that I set, I showed you today in this video uh, may not be inspiring to anybody, but it does work for me. I love that mobility where I can just pack it up and go real quickly, um, but it also is very functional. Now, a lot of people who work from the road want to have a lot more creature comforts, and so they may set their offices up uh, in a way that's very different. And the other thing, too, is remember, I'm a single traveler, so I travel by myself, and so there's really nobody else I have to consider because my day is spent, you know, working in front of the computer. Now, if you're traveling with a spouse or a partner or somebody, it's going to be really important to consider them because asking them to be quiet for eight, nine or 10 hours a day while you're doing calls or working can be a real um, difficult situation. Now, I know a lot of remote workers that actually have um, the outside set up uh, where they can work outside uh, or they're person that they travel with can spend the day outside. Now, that's fine if you're working in temperate climates, but if you're working in climates where it's, you know, a little bit hot or too cold, then asking the person you're traveling with to spend the day outside 
I don't think is really very nice. So you want to be mindful of how you set your mobile office up and respect for the person that you're traveling with. All right, everyone, that'll wrap up this video. If you have any questions about the type of cellular services that I use or what my decisions were to select those cellular services, put it in the comments. Also, if you have questions or how to set up your mobile office, uh, you know, put, you know, share that information and we can have a community discussion on how you're setting up your mobile office. Above all, if you like the video, thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And I will see you all next Sunday.